News first, face to face with Charlotte Benedict. Very good evening and welcome to another edition of Face to Face. We're joined today by former parliamentarian and former chairman of COPE committee, uh, Ms. Diu Gunasekara. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on our program today. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gunasekara, now, of course, uh, given your years of experience uh, in the political arena of Sri Lanka, this is an election year. Do you, do you think this election year uh, will be similar to the elections or the important election years that have come and gone in the past? Or would this mark maybe a turning point in Sri Lanka, uh, taking into consideration everything that has happened during the past few years? I think you are correct. I also feel that it's going to be a turning point. The sense that, uh, you know, we are facing a very profound, deep, unprecedented, decisive economic crisis. Mm. Even still, I think most of the, not only parliamentarians, even some of the intellectuals, they have not really understood or comprehended the mm. gravity of this crisis. Mm. Mm. Uh, so therefore, uh, this uh, crisis will be reflected in the politics, mm. society, and the culture. Hmm. Right. And uh, so the other thing is that uh, constitutionally we are required to have the presidential election. Hmm. So before October 18th, this should be finished. Hmm. So therefore, even the pres if the president wants, he can't put off constitutional requirement, he will hmm. go through hmm. unless he decides to abolish the presidency and then come. Uh, and go for a referendum. That but, is, but, but do you there's, think no, there's remote possibility for that. Okay, okay. Then, therefore, uh, this you know, there are a number of new factors that have emerged uh, as far as this uh, incoming presidential and general elections are concerned. Hmm. First thing is we are having a general election or presidential election in the midst of a, a grave crisis. Hmm. So, therefore, and the people are really, you know, from the, from the UNDP's reports, they have not been published, you can publish it in the press yet, I saw. For the first time, one percent of the people account for thirty-one percent of the wealth. Hmm. And ten percent, top ten percent account for sixty-four percent of the income, national income. Hmm. Never in the history of our history, hmm. such a thing. So that is show the inequality. That is the effect of the crisis. Hmm. It, has effect, it has to be borne by the ordinary people. Hmm. Right. And the, you know, bottom line 50%, uh, they receive only 4% of the national income. Hmm. So that, that is why I have said and this will be going to be reflected in the politics, political process and all the society already we see it. And not only that, has further gone into the culture and you see you find, see, the completely establishment families and crumbled and various other problems hmm. uh, have, hmm. uh, have uh, hmm. uh, for the uh, murders are there, suicides are there, homicides hmm. are there, various things are there, all are reflect, reflection of the crisis, economic hmm. crisis. So therefore, naturally, this will be reflected in the results of the election. Hmm. So to what extent we can't say. Hmm. So, from here to the October, the polarization take place. Hmm. Then the other thing is, we are facing this election at a time when there is a deep national leadership crisis in the country. Hmm. There is right. a massive lacuna for… Black lacuna, hmm. right. And uh, only Ranil Dikrama Singh is a man old stager, hmm. others are new. And, you know, uh, and uh, I, I wonder, in not the the people are beginning to most of the people now who I have met they say they are frightened how to choose whether the, the whoever the man who is elected whether he will be able to tackle the situation hmm, hmm. It, if we might get go beyond control hmm, hmm. and with that is a calamity in the country say hmm. riots and other things hmm. food riots and because because we've we've experienced that. yeah we've so experienced serious. that in two thousand and say it might lead to in a military takeover. If we mm, can't control, mm, mm. So, so those tendencies are there. Mm. So trends are there. So, M Mr. Gunasekar, just before we get into you know yeah. your possible predictions for how things will pan out this year, uh, I, I mean as vague as they might be, 
Um, just to get to know uh, where your biases lie, Mr. Gunasekara, uh, who are you looking at? Uh, supporting no, no, we have not decided it. We, have yet to we still don't know whether Ranil is going to contest or not. Only Sajit, he told me that he is contesting. He phoned me and he told me he is going to contest. Okay. That's, that's, that's how I know. Uh, even Anur, uh, no, they are not really, uh, in my my view, hmm. not time for the presidency. He is taking this opportunity to uh, get a substantial increase in the parliament. Hmm. Hmm. That is the purpose. Hmm. They are using the presidential election for that purpose. But but, but recently I heard um, Andhra Kumar Dishanayaka making a statement saying that you know there is a possibility that if the uh, NPP is uh, maybe one of the front runners at the presidential polls, uh, maybe they'd you know push the presidential polls a little bit later and call for early parliamentary yeah. elections. That's, no, they are, they, from from the beginning they were harping on it, they were insisting that. Pres parliamentary elections should yeah, When you say they were insisting, who who was insisting? No, no, even JVP. Even JVP. Yeah, Sajid okay. both. Okay. They say he, they all, uh, Ranil has no mandate. Mm -hmm. And there's a big gap between the government and the yeah, with, people, Between parliament and the people. And the public, the social, mm -hmm. con mm -hmm. no social contract. Yes. He must get a mandate. Mm -hmm. So, that was the, so naturally, I'm both uh, thinking that really I'm in for the parliamentary election mm -hmm. more than the mm -hmm. presidential election. Okay. So, so moving forward now, you say you have not decided to um, uh, support any candidate. Uh, what are the discussions like? No, may, at least maybe uh, that we may be also put forward a candidate. Y you will also put forward a candidate. Yeah, I mean, not alliance as that. Hmm. So, if uh, are you in discussion with? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, we are in discussion with with uh, with with uh, with number of I don't main <laughs> nature name. Okay. There's a time there when I was uh, like fronts jumping from <laughs> party <laughs> to party. So you're not still sure. <laughs> you're not still sure what's going to happen. I I am not sure. Hmm. Uh, well, we, are, we, we take a principal position. Hmm. This crisis, you can't find a solution from a right-wing government. Hmm. Completely. Hmm. I, I, if you answer, I can tell you later how, how, I, how we view that question today. Then the other thing is, but, but, but there, is no brief, room, there is no room for a left government. Hmm. Right? And the decisive section of the society is in the, mi the middle centre. Hmm. It should be a right centre. Or center right, or center left, or left center, that type of hmm. formation. Form hmm. that, I mean, that's the reality. Hmm. You know, you know, now you see, we got about 16 million voters. Hmm. Right. This time, about 60% of the voters hmm. were really born after 1978. After 1978. Right. Okay. So, the, the, <coughs> this 60% has never seen what has happened prior to under the parliamentary system hmm. or since independence. Hmm. So completely they know only what had happened last say 30 to 40 years. Hmm. Right. That, they are so they are quite so they, they, that's a decisive vote. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yeah. The, that is one that is a one factor. The other thing is the leadership prices as I, I told you know. Hmm. Therefore there are la large old people, they say Oh, there is no methania or from a mind or there is no one how can we have reliance on the will they be able to deliver goods hmm. they will got whether the whole thing go out of their control hmm. so there is a sense of fear hmm. it's just, just justifiable hmm. right uh, so that is a, another, another factor hmm. I think which is going to influence it then the other thing is now two years have lapsed since the outbreak of the crisis. Hmm. Last two years, what has the government done except in the attempt to restructure the debt? Hmm. Nothing else has been done. Really, at a time of a severe economic crisis, hmm. the national priority should be given to production, productivity and nothing else. Hmm. I mean, that, I, I, that's, there's no increase in the production. When there is no increase in production, how will it, how will it be reflected in the, in the living standard of the people? So, but, but, but the government might argue uh, quite the contrary on that because uh, there were attempts to, to privatize certain no, loss no, making no, SOEs. You, you won't get any results at all. You can privatize. Mm -hmm. they, will, they, they will take over and they, you must have, start production on the agriculture, industrial, so, so no you, production So you mean, you, mean, you mean government I mean, You leave the privatization, they, they, you won't get immediate results from the privatization. You, you believe what, that? What I mean is that 
I mean, the whole cabinet should have given a concentrated, uh, concentrated uh, uh, attempt should have been made on the increase in production. Hmm. And, the, uh, and then the entire SME sector is out of gear. Hmm. So without, how, how can we, there's no, therefore, I mean, the, the crude fundamental cause of the crisis is the death of labor, uh, dollar, hmm. death of rupee. Hmm. Their inability to repay payment. Excessive Pay. spending on the part of the government. Right, that's right. Then the, there's an additional factor, there is the international factor, the global economic crisis hmm. and financial turmoil in the global. Hmm. So that have, it, it's had its own impact on here. Hmm. So those are these are the four main factors. So therefore, what is the remedy? Increase exchange. Hmm. So that Tourism is one, the foreign remittance is the other, the other is the exports. Export is still going down. Hmm. I mean, from take from 1978, I mean, that is why I, 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 I'm so sorry, I was also a parliamentarian. Hmm. I was listening to the debate, three debates during the course of this crisis. Hmm. Not a single MP, except one or two just here mentioned, and they tried, attempted to give the fundamental causes that led to the crisis. Hmm. That is, say the exchange crisis. But how is that? Uh, imports exceeds the export. Hmm. Imports exceed. Almost double. Hmm. So therefore, no net foreign exchange earnings. Hmm. That is one thing. Hmm. The other thing is, Ravi Karunanayaka, when he was Minister of Finance, he brought in an amendment to the Exchange Control Act mm. that created some loopholes. Mm. That is why Vijay Dhanadra in the cabinet as well as in the parliament openly said about 52 billion has not come into the country through the exchange. Mm. It has gone through the, through the leaks. Mm. Uh, that is one thing. So that mm. still the government has not closed all those loopholes. Mm. Exchange Control. So then you take the rupee. Hmm. This is, the, you know, no one has mentioned the fact this is the only country in the world where a crisis has taken place, where the local currency is not out of hand. Money, rupee is not flowing into the treasury. What is that? Because of the economic policy, the fiscal policy, and the monetary policy. Hmm. Now, 24% government revenue we had in 1978. Hmm. I looked at the uh, Rodney Mel's budget speeches, 78%, so 24% hmm. government revenue of the GDP. Hmm. Hmm. It came down 20% during Prevadasa. Hmm. It came down to 16% during Chandrika. Hmm. It came down to 13% during Mind. Hmm. It came down to uh, 8% during Ravi Karanayak and Mangala Samarira as finance minister. Hmm, during the came, down, came down to 6%, go to Abhay Basil. Hmm. So down the line for last so 40 years, it was coming down. I can say as an MP and minister, hmm. for 13 times I, I, I have in my budget speech debate, been a member on the opposition as well as the government, hmm. brought, the, brought this to the notice pleaded with the government. There were 14 amnesties. Hmm. So when amnesty means no tax. Hmm. So it's a net result though, that we didn't have. No other country in the world, Argentina or Greece or anyone, they never lost the local currencies. Hmm. I mean, they lost the foreign exchange. That's understandable. Hmm. That is because the, that eco fiscal and monetary policies. Hmm. So that has to be now only that is running us, uh, I mean, walked from the <laughs> slumbers and trying to recover with all that and this and putting all the burdens on the middle class. Mm. And uh, so that's why there's a big how. On the uh, but but, but uh, Mr. Gunasekar, now, are, are you in agreement with the current increase in in the VAT? Because now it's it's a known fact that the government has to increase their revenue. And, and like you very correctly pointed out, the government has missed out 
on a lot of income that is due to the government over the course of the past yeah, 40 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So the government must recover this money. No, no, that's right. I, I know I have been working in the Illinois department as an official mm. who is doing investigation. I know mm. the whole in and out of it. Mm. You know, the reason is now in 97, in uh, 1947, you take mm. the DSL and I, mm. the highest slab income tax mm. was 70%. Mm. Right? Till 1977, it was 70%. Yeah, mm. the other reduced to 55. Mm. Right? Then, Premarath reduced to 45. Mm. Chandrika reduced to 35. Mahindra Rajabhaktha reduced to 28. Then again, 24. Baisal Rajabhaktha reduced to 14. <laughs> so, where money? <laughs> All the money is there in the finance capital people. Mm. The businessmen. I mean, trade, not trading class so much. It's finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is a peculiar situation. We have the world law, it is, that is a, the new feature of neoliberalism. Finance capital emerges mm -hmm. over and above others. Now, we have no land, uh, uh, land owners in our country now. Mm -hmm. No land proprietors. Mm -hmm. No industrial capitalist class. Mm -hmm. No industry. Few industries are there. Hmm. So here we have only finance companies, leasing companies, <laughs> banks, and these are all money what we produce. They are channeled to the, those that, that sector, and they are the people. That is why the Megavera wants to come and <laughs> contest. He is the leader of the finance capital, hmm. and the billionaires. Even <laughs> there are many billionaires, <laughs> two billionaires in the society because they say the other people who are funny. <laughs> So, so, so this is a new, I mean, new development, new situation, hmm. which I mean, the government, either the government or the opposition has not drawn it in people's attention. Hmm. So, so, so in your in your mind, uh, a businessman coming and contesting for the election or the current front runner I mean, from among the businessmen, right. I mean, I they have a right, story. I understand, but, but, but you don't look at it too positively in your books. <laughs> you, you don't look at it too positively in your books, is that what you're saying? No, the, the I, mean, no he, I don't think finally, you know, I, I can tell you, finally, hmm. Mahindra Rajabaksa and Ranil Krimasinga come to a deal hmm. and Dhammikapera will not come in case uh, Ranil comes. You wait and you mark my words. Hmm. So, so, so what is your prediction? Do you, do you, do you predict, think? I, I can't predict. No. I mean, I, I, that's a uh, situation is so complex and complicated. Hmm. I can't. So what, I, what I, I don't know, I, 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 as a man, I don't want to. I mean, even if I think mm -hmm. such a person might, but I don't want to discuss. No, but but what are, what, are, what are the possible scenarios that we're looking at now? We have uh, a businessman. No, still, I, until I, I mean, nominations are given. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, I am, uh, I, from the point of, say, parties, I can say, mm -hmm. the UN people. So, but then, then, then in that case, do you, do you think that uh, there is a possibility that Ranil Vikramasinghe might contest no one the will SLPP? Get, no, one will, no, no one will get 50%. No, no, no. I'm, I'm asking you, is, it, is there a possibility that Ranil Vikramasinghe will be nominated as the presidential candidate yes. of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna? Yeah. There's That's a possibility. What they will come to that deal. There's a possibility. Possibility. So, you, you're saying that there is a real possibility yeah. that the current president, instead of running uh, under the United yeah. National Party, which yeah. is his party, in yeah. which he is the leader, he will choose to, or he will be loved by the SLPP to run under their ticket. Yeah. That's a real possibility. Yeah. And there is also a possibility of, of, of businessman Damika Pereira uh, coming into the fold. No, I don't think he will come. You don't think? In, in case you, Mahindra Rajapaksa agreed with Ranil, hmm. uh, on the uh, Ranil Kumar Singh candidate, hmm. Damika Pereira will not come. Hmm. Do, you, do, you, do you think the UMP SLPP alliance would be a successful one? What's the rate of success? I mean, successful or not, there is no alternative. At just at the moment, I think Mahindra Rajapaksa, yeah, he is a well seasoned politician. Hmm. He is a man, unlike others, he can see through. Hmm. All right. He he will advise his son, hmm. you wait for some time, you try to be a leader of the opposition hmm. and try your uh, luck at the next presidential election. Hmm. Knowing very well who Mahindra Rajapaksa is, I know how what advice he would, he would have given. Hmm. <laughs> so, I, I think we are in the final few minutes of the show. Uh, Mr. Gudasekara, however, uh, now, besides the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, the United National Party, the Samagi Janabalavege, there is also uh, the National People's Power Movement uh, that's now gaining yeah, traction. Yes, so no, Samagi Janabalavege, because I, that is the already, I mean, the, it's a, it's, it's a, it was a substitute for the UNP, you know? Hmm. When you, I mean, it's really that, that 
the lower ranks of the UNP are with Sajid. There is no mm. question about mm. the upper strata may be the UN UNP. Mm. Although they went up, this time they might reconsider and come back. Uh, because taking the overall situation, there is a feeling among the, amongst the top capitalist class mm. that I think Ranil will do better job than Sajid mm. as far as the crisis is concerned. Mm. Taking the his education level, experiences, and his kindness and shrewdness, and but, all. But do you do you, share that, do you share do you share that same sentiment? Ah, oh, that is the view of the capitalist class. Okay. They want a unity. You wait till until the last moment, the capitalist class will bring pressure on Ranil and Sajid to come to a deal. Hmm. It may not come. That is another thing. Hmm. As I said, the class view. Is that that they should get together? Hmm. Oh, Sajid to be prime minister and Pranil. That is the view of the capitalist class. I know. Hmm. So, w what about the what about the NPP, the new party that is nah, coming? New not party. the new party. Yeah, it is really. a left party. It's a left know. party. Yes. No, that, that, that is in the absence of any other protest because it's a that is a protest vote. Hmm. Particularly, uh, I have seen the. It's a good meeting, a well attended meeting, and and GP has always been. Even from 1971, mm. <laughs> I, I can remember what the, what the Professor Sumati Bala, who was a JV doctor, mm. medicine, he told in a recent uh, the interview. interview, he said uh, uh, he backed uh, Ronald, he took uh, Ronald Vijay right around the country in 1982, mm. presidential mm. election. Then, after the immediately after the polls were closed, uh, he, uh, he has asked, uh, uh, then he was a doctor, not a professor. Mm. Then, what do you think about this? He says, about 10 lakhs? Uh, you don't know how to. I tell you, I will get no, not more than two and a half lakhs. Huh? Yes, not Rona Vijay at all. Mm. Uh, people come to see our, they appreciate our speech and they have had, finally they will not vote. Mm. <laughs> But, but, but I mean, I mean this is 1971. You can't yes. compare the situation has completely changed. So, but 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 do you think do you think I, that no, there is a real will. possibility of of maybe? I can I mean, they will do well. Hmm. They will do well, and I, in my view, knowing the very well the leaders of the UJVP, hmm. very mainly who with the, because I am I normally hmm. I I know practically I am in talking terms with all the leaders of all, of political, all political parties. parties. Yes. Right? Hmm. Ranil speak to me, Sajid speak to me. <laughs> we, we, all of this, so they, I know they are, how, how they think, uh, feel about it. And uh, they will do well, but they are in. Hmm. Not the, at the presidential election, but the parliamentary election. Hmm. But then of course there are also ongoing demand. No, I mean, they will not tell. Been, I mean, they are obviously, yes. No, but, but, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that I'm there has been calls since the presidency of uh, Chandika Bandarna Kumarutunga for the abolishment of the executive presidency yeah. and the SJB, uh, the NPP, even the, the UNP and the SLPP on several occasions had made uh, many promises to abolish the executive yeah, presidency. Yeah, try, so, try, so, so in uh, that people light, gave a mandate to Chandraga, people yes. gave a mandate to Mahindra, people gave a mandate to Maitri, Maitri Palasir. Maitri. And, and out Price. of all those presidents, I believe President yeah. Maitri Palasir was the one who at least did the most did. In, in reducing the powers of yeah, the presidency. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mean, subsequently retracted on that. <laughs> credit should be given to him. That's where it is due. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dugunasekar, for joining us on our program. Um, very insightful discussion, of course, <laughs> on on this uh, on the political situation in Sri Lanka during these extremely turbulent times. But uh, one thing is for sure: a choice is going to come along your way in just a matter of a few months, and and this choice uh, will determine the future course uh, of the lives of the future of not only this country but the lives of your children the lives of their children and generations to come in this country mistakes have been made in the past and we are suffering as a result of those mistakes let's try not to repeat those mistakes and vote wisely vote with our minds and not with our hearts and make sri lanka great again thank you very much for tuning in thank you very much uh, mr gunasekar for joining us on our program thank again thank you very much to all our viewers out there we'll see you again same time same place tomorrow until Pleasure to be with you once again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Gunasekar. <laughs> Until we meet again, take care and God bless. <laughs>